Okay, question for you. Um, are you burnt out and kind of, I don't know, checked out at work? Here's the thing, January, which is in the, in the rear view mirror, and February, which we're looking ahead to, it, they're, they're a couple of the toughest months to get through. So we're joined with the author, by the author of uh, The Stress Illusion, Alison Graham, to kind of get that, uh, get that spark back. Do you believe that, that the, the first two months of the year are the toughest? I think there are some factors that intensify burnout, but mm -hmm. like the bills coming in, it's mm -hmm. maybe cooler or just a little bit grayer, but I think burnout's an issue all year long, and it just gives us a great reason to talk about it. Right, okay, so what do you, what do you talk about to your clients first? What's the first thing that you say? It's really about reframing stress. And so often where people are complaining, like I imagine everybody getting ready right now, they're like, yeah. oh, I gotta go to work. And, and if they're feeling that sense of burnout, that's gonna impact everything. And it tends to be a bit of a, a spiral downhill, right? Like once you start feeling overwhelmed, then every little bit just sort of adds to it. Yeah. And so it's really about how do we get clear on what's happening? How do we understand how we're reacting to it? And potentially, because of the human experience, uh, making it harder than it needs to be. And then we work into solution activation. So, so that really is my framework. Th is that what the stress illusion is? What is that illusion? Well, the illusion, there has to be something wrong. Because here's the thing, we are more educated now than ever on how to deal with stress, how to manage our mental health, and like you just have to go to social media and, and see what I'm supposed to do. And we do. can talk about it now where you couldn't talk about it in the right. past. You could never use that with mental health. That wasn't the thing. That's right, but it's not working. So why then, if we're more educated, are stress levels on the rise? stress leaves in companies. Leaders that I talked with across the country are saying, I'm concerned because my people are leaving. Like we have the highest stress leave rates that we've had in years and it's across all industries. So there's a disconnect. And I believe that how we've been taught to deal with stress is actually flawed. I think it's really important to have self care and to exercise and meditate and all of those things. But if you're going to work, and you know, eight to four, and you're building your stress hormones all day, and then going to the gym so you're not, you know, cranky to your family, like because you have to release those. Mm -hmm. We got to stop building them in the daytime, so we can do better work. Okay, so then how do we build them? Well, uh, our reaction to what's happening. See, the reason I think a lot of people want to quit their job when they get overwhelmed and feel burned out, is because they think that it's about the external circumstances that if I could just, I call this when X, then Y thinking. When I just get that next job, when my kids finally grow up, when my kids start listening to me in the morning and we don't have a chaotic morning, right? Then I'm that's gonna be okay. <laughs> that's not existent That's not gonna Same from the guy that's never at home in the morning to deal with it. <laughs> right, aren't you? Uh, yeah, that's, that's one way, avoidance. Yeah. I'm teasing. Um, <laughs> so we have to look at what's happening because there are real challenges that deserve our stress hormones. So survival stress situations, right? If you are in financial peril, if you are uh, dealing with some sort of a trauma, we have to honor that. And so often we in society get this backwards, right? We say, you know, you know, if somebody has gone through a divorce or a big, uh, maybe somebody they love has passed away or something, they, they say, I'm fine. Well, you're not fine. You just went through something that's absolutely core shaking, but yet, when you say, how are you on just a regular day? It's like, oh my gosh, I'm so busy, busy, busy. And we're dramatizing all of the normal stuff. We've got a minute left, Allison. If there's somebody watching right now that is stressed, is there something that they can do today to help today? Yes, notice those repeating moments of angst. Say, okay, this is constantly causing me irritation. And then look at, step back, look at it objectively, almost like it's a movie and say, how can I strategically fix that one thing? Can I change how I'm interacting with my coworker? Can I stop complaining about the fact that everybody else is dropping the ball, right? And if you are a leader, give your team the space and the grace to have the big conversations so that collectively you can lower the stress levels in your office. That's the one thing to do today, the stress illusion. When is it coming out? It's, it'll be out this spring. It'll it's, be out this yeah, spring. Yeah, that's the plan. So, uh, but there's lots of information online already, yeah. like videos and everything to help people. I really believe if we shift how we're approaching stress, we can start to see it. Like it's so cool like, and inspiring yeah, well, to well, see my clients. Great, great chat. Yeah, okay, awesome. Nice to meet you. Come back anytime. Thanks. You come back too, because Morning Live is still coming.